Yeah, the Connect, or as they call the Stock Connect from Shanghai to Hong Kong, the through train, uh, it's in its very early stages. Uh, the through train for Hong Kong took several years to develop. It still hasn't arrived at the level of activity that either side, that is Hong Kong or China, would like to see. Uh, I think it's early days for that type of an arrangement, but that didn't stop President Xi from being at the London Stock Exchange today uh, to start this initiative. There is clearly demand on the part of Western investors to access Chinese capital markets. They've been very shut. It's been very difficult to do so. Mainly, you've been able to access those products through exchange-traded funds and indices, but you haven't been able to buy securities directly. This initiative is aimed squarely at allowing Western investors via London to be able to access Chinese securities that are quoted in the domestic market. First, I want to ask you about the significance of China arranging its debut offshore yuan bond issuance in London. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think it's big, Elaine. Uh, I think there's a real buzz about London right now. You know, you've had dim sum bonds floated in Hong Kong, Singapore, elsewhere for some time, but those were by corporates. In fact, last week, right here in London, the Agricultural Bank of China, China Construction Bank, floated some bonds. But this is sovereign debt. This is a whole different ballgame. It's the equivalent of the U.S. taking their treasury bills to an offshore financial center. So make no mistake, this is quite a turning point in the internationalization of the yuan. GF Fund Management has become the first Chinese investment manager to expand into Europe, opening a London office. How big is the appetite for Chinese investment products by UK and global investors? That's a great question. I think the most direct answer is it remains to be seen. Remember, this office is for bi-directional deal flow. So it's taking products that are based on Chinese assets and marketing them to Western and, and global investors as London is a, is a hub of global finance. Uh, but it's also giving access back to the Chinese market for other types of instruments that could be floated. So, for example, uh, you're going to see an outreach to Western investors who in some way want to participate in what's happening in China, even though growth is slowing, it's stable. Um, so I think this marks, again, a turning point in the marketing of products. There have been a lot of efforts aimed at getting Chinese money into projects, whether it's offshore or in other financial destinations. But this is China reaching out to bring international investors back into their home market. Some of these products may, may even take the form of retail products, so not just for the large institutional investors. Uh, I think there is an appetite, if only from a diversification standpoint, and China being the world's largest economy in terms of purchasing power. Uh, but it remains to be seen how effective that sell-through is going to be. But with London building an offshore RMB trading center and China's effort to globalize its currency, is, is it mutually beneficial? It very well should be. What I mean by that is one of the shining stars in China's rebalancing of its economy has been the services sector and led by financial services. So far, that's pretty much been a domestic market, and we all know about the ups and downs and the bursting of the bubble this summer, which sent a lot of chaos and a lot of government intervention into China. Now we're going to see China expanding that financial services market outside of China, truly attempting to internationalize it. So I think it's significant in that regard. Of course, the UK, and London in particular, has been for centuries uh, a well-known center of global finance. It's only logical that they start to export some of that expertise back into China. So I think it's very fitting that this is taking place right here, right now, today in London. Well, that being said, uh, some of those U.K. companies with rich experience, can you talk about the type of opportunities it offers for them? Yes. You're going to see, first of all, London becoming the largest center for dim sum bonds outside of Asia, first and foremost. So that notoriety, that positioning, we think will spawn further efforts that are aimed at yuan-denominated securities. Let me give you an example. China has been positioning to come into the International Monetary Fund's special drawing rights. One of the biggest steps that's important and required for that graduation, if you will, to the top tier of global currencies is the internationalization of the yuan. So efforts that are underway in London today to make that happen are going to weigh heavily in the IMF's evaluation of whether or not China is ready 
to become a part of those special drawing rights. So it has significance beyond just daily trade. It has much broader implications. What would you say are the biggest differences in looking at President Xi's visit to the UK and the one preceded uh, here in the United States? Well, first and foremost, I think it is the lack of a political agenda. Again, in President Xi's visit to the U.S., he purposely stopped in Seattle to get things started on a business point of view. He bought some things, airplanes from Boeing. He sold some things, an assembly plant in China. He then and only then showed up in Washington where the rest of the issues, some might say the noise, started to kick in. In Britain, it's much more subdued. The political agenda, if there is one, is really playing second to a heavy economic agenda and the recognition on the part of the UK that some of their aging infrastructure could be very nicely benefited by Chinese cooperation, by joint ventures. So I think that's what struck me the most as being a difference, is that there is not such an overt political agenda and so much noise in the background as there was in the U.S. surrounding many other issues outside of trade, outside of the economy, outside of business.